Thank you. First of all, I'll take one minute extra. This is two minutes extra. This is a historical day. Why it's a historical day? I think uh, Agarwal uh, Saab has put across the most important point. During your entire medical education, you pass out psychiatry, you pass your MBBS, but not knowing much about psychiatry. And that's what... So, the, the holiness of this, and I would say that the World uh, Health Organization has given the Mental Health Week in the most auspicious week. This is our Navaratri times. Every year, between 4th and 10th, we celebrate World Mental Health Week. And on 10th, we celebrate World Health Day. So, after passing Saptami, I think Agarwal Sub during the zero hour has brought out the beauty. We are just entering the day. And today is the most auspicious day when Durgashtami actually kills. And today, all of you are going to learn how to kill a depression. So that is the first thing I would say. The second thing which I would really say is that this is not just one of me. The Indian Psychiatric Society, the Live Laugh uh, Foundation, together with IMA, together with IMA, he is going through across the country to educate. And in the next 15, 20 minutes, you have learned already that depression is disease of brain, not of mind. I am differentiating mind from the brain only to say brain is the most important organ in the body and it also can get deranged and it needs to be corrected whenever it is deranged. And we are talking about depression only today so that our focus is very, very clear. Having said this, you know this definition of health, but I would focus on two or three important aspects we have gone a lot way from saying that the disturbance of the bile, the melancholy, the phlegm from the Ayurveda to understanding uh, the, the, the entire... I mean, this slide, if you can remember, and uh, very well presented by Sham, almost all the disorders of the uh, psychiatry you would have seen, diagnosed and gone through. The, the anxiety you can see there in the blue color is the depression and what unfortunately happens is they are masked they are not diagnosed you see it you know depression and what is the common advice you give try to reduce your depression try to don't get tension it's very easily said for your patient but you need to give through and I am sure Everyone sitting in this room would have gone through what is the normal mood lowering for a short period. Your boss hurt you, your patient scolded you, your patient is not getting well, your mother-in-law scolded you, enough number of lists. But, but what is the difference between the depression which you are going to diagnose and going to treat? That's what I'm, I'm focusing in the next. I think this is one of the things which has happened Prozac or Fluoxetine, which most of you know and prescribe in the day-to-day prescription. That is the thing about a depression, a human being can survive almost anything as long as he sees the end of this side. But depression is so insidious that you are watching in your patient. And I think Agarwal has very nicely put, you spend four minutes in your clinical diagnosis, in that you definitely see the depression. How to diagnose? I am giving a list, I am giving a list to just say very, very, on this side you see all the psychological symptoms. Simplest thing is, ask one or two questions. Are you feeling sad over the last few weeks? Are you sleeping properly over the last few weeks? How is your appetite over the last few weeks? Concentrate on the last four weeks. If you are not able to sleep well, you are getting up many times in the night, you are feeling sad mostly all through the day, and because of the sadness, you are not able to work. And then, all these things, if you ask, they will be there. But more important, I think most of your patients complain the other side of the symptoms. I am sure each one of you would see vague aches and pains, what we call multiple aches and pains, the chest pains. Patients coming with chest pains, which euphemistically diagnosed as non-cardiac chest pain. Again, headaches. Very common pain. 
vague back aches where you investigate including MRI shows very normal. Gastrointestinal complaints. All these complaints where your clinical diagnosis is that nothing is emerging but they persist for four to eight weeks, you are sure your diagnosis is right. Remember, once you make a diagnosis of depression, forget about DSM-5 or ICD, all mean the same. We are talking about an individual who is suffering because of depression. And Sham has very nicely told us, and this is not our figures, we have done, in IPS has done a multi-centric study across the country, and the figures not reported is right. We found and we were surprised and we thought we, we are not right. 50% of patients attending general practice are suffering from depression. That's a very high figure. Every second patient of yours is having a depression which is going under. And last but not the least, ask one question about how is your recent sexual behavior? Did it come down? Are you happy with your sex? Every patient I'm sure is going to say yes for this answer. You are sure your diagnosis is made. So only four things. Last four weeks, are you sleeping well? Is a sad mood? Is the appetite reduced? You don't need to ask all these questions. These are all. And sexual function. We are focusing on the biology. And remember, Sham has very nicely showed in the etiology where all the areas, talk about amygdala, talk about hippocampus, talk about cingulum, all are connected with our emotional circuit. And that is very wonderfully disturbed in this wonderful disorder. So at least two weeks of any of these symptoms, your, your diagnosis is right. You cannot be going wrong. Having said that, what is this depression due to? The only thing is, the next question you ask is, is it pervasive? Is it related to every event? Many times, most of you would say, is there any problem? I can assure you with about more than three decades of experience, Patients need not have any psychosocial problems. Need not have, but they might attribute it to, say, my mother-in-law is constantly harassing, my boss is harassing. See, they are attributing only this period during the depression. So remember, this is the disease. We right now know the physical complaints actually predominant in the Indian population. Not only India, the Far East, including China, the depressive patients actually present to you first. Usually, the time lag before they come to psychiatrists is about nine months to one and a half years. That means they would have passed through all the investigations, all the specialists. So you can diagnose this diagnosis. Coming to the physical and negative symptoms, the most important, all the physical symptoms are connected for the various neurohormones. And that's why when you diagnose a depression, you have right now, you're all lucky people, at least the younger people. I remember when I joined my psychiatry, I only have two antidepressants, amipromine and amitriptyline. And the same combination, amipromine along with digipine. Now you have SSRIs, SNRIs, and NRIs, and a variety of molecules, each attacking a specific neurohormone. Why is that important for you? What causes depression, I think uh, he has said, but I would summarize in this. You see the top one is environment. So there is this so-called stress which actually disturbs the biological things. Biological already said less of hormones or less of hormone sensitivity. Remember what are the hormones? Neuroephrine, norephrine, epinephrine, serotonin, a combination of these three hormones and each, as you can see, and, and for you, I'm summarizing the, the today's knowledge. What is this today's knowledge is most important is, you can actually diagnose in your patient of depression, what is depression? This, and in most of the cases, all the three hormones are involved. If the patient has predominant sexual symptoms, that is reduced sexual function, reduced appetite, or getting more irritable and aggressive, it is in the serotonin rate. Likewise, impulsive. The most common example of impulsive by which women, because unfortunately, depression is two times more common in women. They do the impulsive buying. Shopping speed, freeze, 
actually reduce their depression. So you can ask one question. Anxiety and irritability, again, is a mixture of serotonin and norepinephrine. The most important, which is under study, is dopamine. And motivation, which is, again, a mixture of dopamine on this side and norepinephrine. Now, why is this important? Once you realize that you have already diagnosed, spend only one more minute, get this, so you can actually choose your molecule in today's world. In today's world, we have already 20 molecules which are different from imipramine and antidepressant. Now, based on, say, for example, predominance, the most commonly used molecules today by each one of you is an SSRI. They are much more safe. In fact, the Safe Heart study and the most recent study have shown, as just now you have heard, that in cardiac patients, if you don't treat depression, they were going to die much earlier. Each one of you can start SSRIs with SAFE because they have the best SAFE profile. And even if they take overdoses of SSRIs, the death is very unlikely as compared to tricyclics like imipramin, which used to be the generation. So you can, when I study, I'm also starting the treatment for this disabling disorder is antidepressant antidepressant, antidepressant. Now, antidepressants, you can choose very nicely. They actually reduce all the gamuts of the symptoms. For example, the impairment of GABA causes anxiety disturbance, norepinephrine, you have heard this. The pain in your patients is related to the norepinephrine and serotonin combination, as you can see both. Now, here in this slide, I summarize some of the components which actually contribute to your pharmacology how you use, depending on the medication. Today, it is almost most of the molecules, though we attribute either due to a serotonin or an norepinephrine, I think that's much more, the brain actually works as a kind of a combination. So all these neurotransmitters are involved, but all these neurotransmitters also, when we give a molecule, can also affect indirectly causing side effects. So that's what you're going to see. So it's very, very, very well documented, proof-wise, that antidepressants actually change. To summarize, whatever might be the psychosocial cause, your diagnosis is not wrong. Don't worry about what is causing. Though, I'm saying, a supportive word actually cures. If you are like Agarwal, you would actually quote quite well from Ramayana, Lord Dasarada has suffered from depression twice. First, when Lord Rama went for learning along with Viswamitra, he had a depression lasting for six months. As Rama returned with a bride, Lord Sita, his depression is cured. But the next time when he was banished for 14 years, he actually died of suicide. If you, any one of you read Ramayana, you will find hallucinations. Oh Rama, oh Rama, which was clearly was seeing Rama when Rama was not there. He didn't eat food. He lost weight. In fact, he succumbed to depression by suicide, you can say. So, there is something you can quote that for your patient and say, depression is treatable. Even in Ramayana, it is there. Why Ramayana? So, go for Bhagavad Gita, where Lord Krishna, so as he gives, because he is a Lord. And who is Nara Arjuna? You read the first and second chapter, you have a clear description of whatever I just told. You read the understanding, it talks about the fear. In fact, saying, I want to leave and run away. I want to leave this life. I don't want to do fight. There is description of depression. Having said this, the depression, as you say, I think I just want to spend one minute if each one of you. This is a very simple questionnaire. And it is do you have any signs and depression in your uh, waiting room? You can give it to your somebody to pick and come back. If they tick more than four, you are sure the patient is suffering. So, clinical diagnosis is your own gut feeling, but you can also objectively read this. And I'm sure 50% of your patients are diagnosable depression. I'm sure with the, your expertise, what IMA and IPS is going to do, is please diagnose depression and start treatment. The easiest way to start treatment 
just tell me in one minute before. Five minutes. The easiest way to treat depression is say kind words, say you're going to well, start with that words, and prescribe any SSRI because all SSRIs are equal. SSRIs are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. The most commonly used molecules are acetylopram. There are about 40 brands available in the market. And the dosage is most simple, single dose at bedtime. Initially, patient might need either a clonazepam or a jolpidam for sleep. As remember, all antidepressants takes about one to four weeks to work. Acetylopram. Acetylopram. Acetylopram, the dose is usually very easy. You start with 10 milligrams, after four weeks, increase to 20 milligrams. Remember, 60 to 70 percent recover during the four to eight weeks. Time. Now, always ask about whether there is a suicide. If a patient is planning an attempt or made an attempt, probably they are the cases who need an extra care by psychiatrist. They are the, I'm only giving you what are the patients whom you should refer to psychiatrist. Otherwise, you can start and treat. Likewise, all the patients which I told you about somatic complaints, unexplained chest pains, unexplained headaches, whole body aches, all these cases, just ask them to come to you every week for the next three, four weeks, give this medication, and some of them you can give clonazepam initially. Remember, clonazepam has to be guided by you for a very short period. This is the simplest way where you can treat, and I'm sure each one after this lecture would be that much strong to start the medication. Now, what happens if the patient recovers? The patient would do recover, I told you, 60 to 70 percent by about eight weeks. You need to continue for a length of time. First episode usually about a year. If the, in the life, that is the first episode you have diagnosed, give for a year. If it is occurring for the second time, see the gap between the first and second episode. If it is lasting for more than three years, again treat it like a single episode only, again one year. But if there is an episode occurring less than three years, probably these are the patients you whom you need to give for a much longer period, usually more than two years. So these are the general guidelines, you are not wrong. And luckily, any of these SSRS, except probably fluoxamine, there are about five drugs. Fluoxetine, sertraline, acetylopram, fluoxamine, paroxetine. All these drugs are single dosage, can give as a bedtime. Mostly 10 to 20 milligrams of acetylopram, 10 to 20 milligrams of paroxetine, 50 to 100 milligrams of sertraline. This is a basic pharmacology. And luckily, drug to drug interactions. Patient might be receiving six to seven drugs of antihypertensives, anti-diabetics, anti-cholesterol. They do not have drug to drug interactions with any of these class. The second drug, second class of drug is what we call SNRI, selective serotonin and norepinephrine. This is a dual reuptake inhibitor. They are much more useful for the somatic complaints. You have venlofaxine and desvenlofaxine. Very safe drugs. Again, drug to drug interactions is very less. So this is a basic pharmacology, but remember, only drugs are not useful. We keep talking about talking to the patient. Maybe, I think we will come with a guideline about the counseling. You might lose five patients, but that patient who recovers from depression, he is likely to be loyal to you much more for a longer period. Having said this, I think each one of you sitting here can treat depression. Remember, only who are suicidal, only who are violent, which is less than 20 to 30 percent, they might need. And I fully agree with Agarwal sir that we, the number of psychiatrists across the country is far fairly skewed. We can't cater to the 20 billion, uh, 20 million patients every day available today. But we are there. We are there to only take care of the suicide risk. And suicide risk is real. As you said, by this time, I think in the morning, since the morning when we started the lecture, at least 10 people would have died by this time because of suicide. In this country only. So remember, each I want that IMA 
and each one of you should be empowered to diagnose and treat and we we have joined together all three of us have joined together ima ips and level of foundation we will go across the country to spread this message that we can manage you can manage depression and you know the patients to refer to us thank you thank you